Hi, I'm Deborah Fowler, and this is a quick start to USD ROP. So right now I have a file that I've created, which has a sphere. It has a material. I'm using principled shader for the moment. And it has a camera. So we want to use this in Solaris. There's two ways we can do this. We could go to the desktop and grab Solaris, which has a stage, or we can create a lot network, which is what a stage is doing, to get Solaris that way. I'm going to use that method. So I do lop network. I'm going to dive inside and I'm going to bring my scene in. Notice right now there's nothing in the scene view. There's no camera, no nothing. What we want to do is bring in our scene view, so our scene import, and I'm going to do all. Uh, there is scene import cameras, lights, materials, and so on, but I'm just going to grab everything. And now we have this rendering in Karma CPU. Vulcan is a previewer and is uh, Karma XPU is not going to respect principal shader, um, but it is there as well. And we'll get to that when we start doing Material X. Okay, so if I wanted to render this to disk, I could throw down a Karma setting node. And in here, I'm going to change this to a small resolution. And then in here, I need to change the camera to point to the right camera so that we're seeing in the same viewport. Okay. So if I render this to disk, it is now going to go off, create a render folder in my directory, and give me my render. So in here, if I open this with mplay, we will see that we have our sphere. OK, cool. So what we want to do next is use USD ROP. So in that case, and I'm just going to get rid of this so that it's empty. In that case, we want to use a USD ROP node so that we can do command line or we can do render farm. So we don't need a GUI. All right, so let's do USD ROP. So I throw this down. I still need my render settings, and I don't need this. OK, so because of the way our farm is set up, we're going to get rid of GEO here because we need the USD on the top level. And rather than having it say hip file, which is going to be test, I'm going to call this scene just so that I know that that's my top level. Okay. Now, if I hit Save to Disk, it's going to give me an a error message, which is uh, safe to ignore in this case. It just is saying that it's implicitly defining the path, and I'll show you what it's doing over here. What it did was it created the sphere in obj, sphere object material. Okay. And in here is my USD. In here, for my scene, it's referencing this USD in here. Okay. So this is all I need. This object folder and this USD file is all I need to render on the farm or to render command line. So let's bring up the launcher and go into command line. And what I want to do is go to the directory. As you can see, there's my files. And I'm going to use husk scene USD file. So it's the same command as on Linux. Go ahead and run this. And in a few seconds, we'll have our render. So if I go in here now, we have our render, which has now been done command line. And as expected, it looks much the same. OK. Um, by the way, you can also launch mplay from here, which would be the mplay for this version. And you can see right now I'm getting a ability to use Aces uh, when I'm previewing. So in here there are options in here so that you can use various different viewers, whereas if I pulled up mplay uh, from my command line, I right now have linked to an older version. So just a quick note. OK, so what if I wanted to get rid of that? OK, I can go down to Extra Files and just say turn off that error. I'm just going to go ahead and save this again so you can see. It still gives you the warning saying it's using an implicit path, but that's OK because we know where it is. OK, so if I save that to disk, you'll see that the folder is still the exact same. OK, all right, so we have our USD. We would copy the obj and the scene USD to the render farm, and we'd be good to go. All right. There's another way as well, which is to use SOP import and just bring in the geometry 
and use the shaders and lights and um, whatever else you want to use in Solaris itself proper. Uh, and that's another way to do it. So let's do it that way. So I'm just going to go over here and do a sub import. And what we're going to do is just bring in the geometry. Now the reason I'm doing this is because you may want to use Solaris lights and materials. You might want to use, for example, Material X, and then you would have a material library. Now I could actually import my materials. I'm going to do this one with Material X. So I need a material library. And before I do that, I'm going to go back to here and talk a little bit about this. This is again that warning about the path. But in the SUP import, there's a really easy way to fix that. I can just say, oh, actually, I want that in hip slash geo slash sphere dot usd. And now I've set a specific path so that when I write out my files, and I'm going to go blow this one away so that we don't have it cluttering that up. I go into my render folder and get rid of that too. And so now we're ready to go. Let's get rid of this one as well. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to create a material X. Dive inside, hit tab, and I'll just do Karma Material Builder. Dive in here, and let's make this something really obvious. Okay, now the material library, I can autofill, and then I can either assign to geometry or I can drag and drop. I'm just going to use a quick assignment, and then I have my pink sphere. Okay, so now if I do a USD, I might want to add my Karma utility, my Karma previewer uh, render properties. Okay, there's my Karma render properties. I'm going to reduce again the size to smaller. And in this case, I don't have a camera yet. So let's just do a camera in here. Okay. You'll notice that it added it in my um, chain. So I now have camera, material, and SOP import. So I'm SOP bringing in my SOP import. I'm setting the path to a specific place that I want to write my geometry. And I'm going to actually call this geometry USD, just in case you have other geo folders. That way it keeps it clean. So we have our geo USD, we have our material, we have our camera. We could also have uh, lop lights, which again, because we're not in the Solaris desktop, I could bring that in and I already have here. So I could grab a light. Um, for right now, I'm just going to leave it. And then in here, Again, we're just using a USD, we're doing our render settings, we're using a USD ROP. That one, again, we're not intending on doing it to from the GUI, so we're going to use a USD ROP, not a USD render ROP. That's a USD render ROP. This is a USD ROP. Okay. This one writes it out. And we're going to change it again to scene. And that, and in fact, we don't actually need this. Let's get rid of that too. It's up to you. Okay, so now I have everything set up. I'm going to go ahead and save this to disk. And so now, if I look in here, I have my scene USD and my geo USD, and at the top level is my sphere USD, which is going to be referenced in my scene USD. Right now I have no renders because I haven't rendered it. Let's go ahead and render it. Again, I'm going to use the launcher to do command line because ultimately that's what my farm is going to do. All right, CD desktop demo and again we're going to look to make sure it's there and we say husk scene.usd and now take a look and we're going to go into render and play load disk files takes us directly into our hip directory and go into render and there's our nice pink sphere. Okay, so that's pretty much all you need for USDs. Now, if you had done this in a stage, it's exactly the same thing. Here, Control C, Solaris. Again, we have nothing in here. I hit Control V. There is my geometry, and so I have my SOP import, which is coming in. You can see that it lists whatever's coming in in here. I have my material library, so this is a little more convenient for those of you who like to drag and drop. Boom. Uh, I have my camera, which again is in here, camera one. I have my karma settings, and I have my 
USD render ROP and my USD ROP. So this is for when I have my GUI up and I want to render to disk. This is for when I have need to render it offline, which i.e. the farm. Okay, and in here you have your viewport render. Um, same thing, scene import all. We have our green sphere. We have our render settings. We have our render ROP. And we have our USD ROP so that we can write that out. And again, this one is going to use different pathing for my scene, but it still works. So again, you can use either one. All right, that's it. Uh, so let's actually copy some of this up to the farm. So the farm, you can use Falzilla, you can use uh, my file uh, to get there. Um, I'm going to use Falzilla because that's my favorite. So I'm just going to pull up Falzilla. And... In here, I have it set up so that I can connect to whatever I want. In this case, it's going to be the farm on SCAD. Okay, and we go over there to render farm. And you can see I've got some things in here. I've already got a demo folder. Uh, let me blow that one away. Because I'm going to load up my folder. And so let me go to my folder here. All I need is I could copy my whole demo folder here, but I'm going to go ahead and create directory and call this demo. And then in here, I'm going to grab my geo USD and my scene USD. That's all I need. I don't need the hip file. If I had textures, I would also have my text folder. So that's all set. Now I need to launch it. So let's go ahead and launch it. I'll grab SCAD render farm. All right, so now submit job. It's going to make you log in. And now you can select your USD file. And I'm going to do one through three. You want to make sure that you select the correct version of Houdini and then hit render. That's it. So you can go to the dashboard and Check to see when it's done. And we'll come back in a few seconds and see how we're doing. I'm going to go back to the dashboard and see. So we are the only job right now, so we should be good to go. Should be a few seconds. There we go. We've already been assigned machines. In here, you'll see eventually you'll see a log file, which is the information that comes out because we're doing this verbose mode. And we'll come back and see our job folder. So our job folder we're looking for is 238813. Again, I'm going to go to FileZilla, go back up to the top, and refresh. And not quite there yet, so it's not finished. Just wait for it. We can see that it's still processing. There we go. Okay, so there's our logs. Right now it's working on creating the logs. Click on the log file. Still nothing generated. And whoa, there's one. Okay, so over here I just refreshed. And I can see there's one, one minute, two seconds. So you can see the Houdini environment is uh, set. And if we scroll down here, there's my house command. So this one, because it's script not being run directly in the directory, has to specify the path, but it's just husk. Minus V means verbose, uh, level 4. Uh, minus F3 means it's the third frame, and so on. Um, number frames, 1. It's, again, outputting this to a path, and it's going to output it to an EXR with its frame number. Um, it's using Karma, USD, input, scene USD. Okay. Now we didn't have to specify again the whole path because we are in the directory. Okay, and most importantly when we look down we should see a finished at the bottom and we do. Saved image. That's what you're looking for. That right there says I'm happy. Okay, so let's take a look again and refresh. They're all done. Let's go back over here into our folder, refresh, and there's our output. Okay. 
So uh, to get this, I can just drag and drop this. And in fact, let me grab my folder so that there, there we are. I'm just going to put them in here for a good place for containing them. And we'll just grab these so that you can see that they're all working. Now we haven't got any animation in here, so not too exciting, but there we go. And there you are. Okay, so all we needed was that USD information because that is essentially all that you need for your files for your scene. Okay, so hopefully that's helpful. Um, we'll mention one more thing, which is when you're ropping out, if you're doing multiple frames, you want to make sure that you rop if you're doing an animation. You want to rop out your frames. Okay, so thank you for watching.